Good morning, everyone. Morning. It's wonderful to see you all here. All right. Uh, we have a few announcements to begin our service. First of all, we want to um, give a warm thank you and welcome to uh, Ransom Hawthorne, who's here with our message today, and he's here with his family. Uh, this week on Tuesday, 7 p.m., we have the Women's Circle and the Youth Bible Study. Uh, Dan and Joe will be back by then. Uh, Wednesday will be the Adult Bible Study class. Thursday at 6.30 will be the Alpha Course. That'll be uh, the Alpha Course with a meal included. And then next Sunday, remember that we're going to have the AED training after service. So that'll be a good thing to be here for. And then the Sunday after that, at 5.30, we'll have our wiener roast at Colorado, uh, Coronado Heights. Uh, it says to bring your own wieners, buns, plates, lawn chairs, and some food to share. And it'll be a great time of fellowship as we hopefully enjoy a beautiful sunset. Hopefully there won't be too many clouds. And uh, we will be doing communion next week as well. Uh, I was impressed by the wisdom corner in our bulletin uh, this morning, so I want to just take a few seconds to read that. Uh, it's a quote from Hughes Wagner. He says, if a person is a socialist or a communist, I will know it in 24 hours. If he's a member of a labor union, I will know it within a few days. But if he is a member of a Christian church, it may be years before I will ever learn of it. And that was kind of, that struck me. Um, that's not really a very, usually the Wisdom Corner has some upbeat stuff. <laughs> it's kind of, that's kind of a downer. Uh, <laughs> I think uh, Mr. Wagner's point is that we're often very vocal about our opinions, especially our controversial opinions. Um, but we're not always very vocal about our beliefs and maybe the things that are the most important. Um, I was reading that and I was thinking about the, the shoes in, in Ephesians. It's talking about the armor of God and it has the shoes that are the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace and that we should be ready to share that with, with everyone. And uh, yeah, that's a, that's a good thing to remember. So maybe not lighthearted, but a good thing to remember in these times. Um, now I would like to call you all to worship as we prepare ourselves to worship. Let us read in our bulletin. Praise the Lord. Great are the works of the Lord, studied by all who delight in them. One more announcement I forgot. There are Pray for America.
his blessed precious liver his praise is saying love so mighty and so true marries my soul's best songs faithful loving service to to him belongs love lifted me love lifted me when nothing else can come love lifted me love lifted me love lifted me when nothing else could help Souls in danger, look above, Jesus completely saves. He will lift you by his love out of the angry waves. He's the master of the sea, builds his Lord, uh, we trust in you, and we pray for the resolution of the conflicts in the East, which are growing more and more. And Lord, we also pray that you would, you would give us courage to share your word, your gospel with the people around us, this opportunity that you've given us on this earth while we are still with them. Um, we thank you that the gift that you've given us is not a spirit of fear, but of love and power and self-control. And so we pray for boldness and courage to spread the good news with, uh, with those friends that you've given us that, that are not in you. We thank you, Lord, for good health that you've given us that are, that are here and for those that are not here, and we pray for their recovery. We ask that you would be glorified in this time as we worship you. We pray all these things in the name of Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. More about Jesus. This is what we need to be singing next, and that's what we need to be know about. More about Jesus. So remain seated, and we'll sing that. Jesus would I know more of his grace to others show more of his saving fullness see more of his love who died for me more more about Jesus more more about Jesus more of his saving fullness see more of his love who died for me more about Jesus, let me learn. More of his holy will discern. Spirit of God, my teacher be. Showing the things of Christ to me. More, more about Jesus. More, more about Jesus. More of his saving fullness see. More of his love he died for me. More about Jesus in his word, holy communion with my Lord, hearing his voice in every line, making for faith the same mind. More, more about Jesus, more, more about Jesus, more of the saving fullness see, more of his love who died for me. More about Jesus on the throne, riches and glory on his own. More of his kingdom, sure increase. More of his coming, Prince of Peace. More, more about Jesus. More, more about Jesus. More of his 
sailing from the sea for of his love who died for me. That's right. All right. So greeting time. Yes, it is greeting time. As the children come up for the children's message, let's take a few minutes to greet each other. Well, good morning. I don't know where you guys usually set up, so if I set up in the wrong place, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, like, I like to have you guys up on stage so that the adults have something nice to look at. <laughs> so how many of you have ever heard somebody say, you got to trust your heart or go with your heart? You ever heard anybody say that? Well, I have a comic here. Do you guys like comics? Yeah. Okay, I have a comic here that's a little something about that. And so it's, it's a comic of a, a mom talking to her little boy and then the little boy talking to his heart. So he, she says to the little boy, this is a difficult decision. In times like these, you have to learn to trust your heart, sweetie. Trust your heart. He says, okay, heart, what's it going to be? Heart says, sin. He goes, ah. Uh, Jeremiah 17.9 says that the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately uh, and without cure, who can understand it? So our hearts, in a lot of ways, are kind of like this relatively blank piece of paper, right? When there's nothing on there, we can kind of draw whatever we want on there, and it might be good or it might be bad, but there's all kinds of options available to us. Now, what we want as Christians is to have the Holy Spirit in our heart to help make it look the way that it should instead of just looking any old way. So does anybody know in the Bible there, there's kind of two physical things that the Spirit is compared to or that are kind of associated with God's Spirit? Does anybody know what those might be? 
guesses? Um, the cross. Uh, the cross is an important symbol in the Bible, but not something that we necessarily directly associate with the Spirit of God. So if we think about in the wilderness, the people were going, and they were led by a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. So clouds in Kansas, we kind of associate with wind, right? Wind is a very Kansas thing. That's why in, a, in our state song it says the skies are not cloudy all day because the wind blows them out. So I have something kind of like wind and fire, but I thought since the church has been burned down a long time ago, uh, we would just go with wind and heat. That's close enough, I think, this morning. So. Hopefully it'll get hot enough. It might take a minute. It's kind of working. It's taking a minute. So when we are exposed to the influence of the Spirit, then God changes our heart to be more like Jesus. And all righty. What? Is there, no, there's nothing on the back of the paper. All right. Thanks, kiddos. found myself wanting to come right up here and sit down. <laughs> what? <laughs> Thank you for doing that. And this next song is um, uh, Open My Eyes That I May See, and that's your optometrist's favorite hymn at the <laughs> church he goes to, uh, 381 in your hymnal. So remain seated. We'll sing that one together. that I may see glimpses of truth thou hast for me place in my hands the wonderful key that shall unclasp and set me free silently now I wait for thee ready my God thy will to see open my eyes illumine me spirit divine Open my ears that I may hear Voices of truth thou sendest clear And while the wave notes fall on my ear Everything false will disappear Silently now I wait for thee Ready my God thy will to see Open my ears illumine me Spirit divine Open my mouth and let it bear Gladly the warm truth everywhere Open my heart and let it bear 
let me prepare Love with my children thus to share Silently now I wait for thee Ready, my God, thy will to see Open my heart, illumine me Spirit divine Um we appreciate Ransom coming and uh, helping us out today to bring us our message. Uh, as you, there was a lot of people on vacation and they're moving, doing doing things today, and we appreciate him uh, coming and help us out. You know, I've known this kid a long time. I mean, he was just dating. I think you guys were just dating or something. But I'll be interested. We we appreciate you coming to help us out, and uh, we consider it quite an honor. Ransom, so, thank you. Well, thank you, Gary. Um, when God made me, he knew that I was going to do attic and crawl space work. And so I am not the same size of either Pastor Dan or Gary, but uh, we'll work with what I've got. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, uh, my name's Ransom Hawthorne. My wife is Becca. She's Jeff Johnson's daughter, who's Lorraine's son, so that's the way maybe some of you know me. Maybe some of you know me uh, as an electrician. That's kind of what I do with a pretty good chunk of my life. Uh, but I also happen to be the pastor of family ministry over at the uh, Free Methodist Church here in town. Of all the verses that I learned in Awana, that those of you who don't know what Awana, it was kind of a kid's program where you memorize like a whole bunch of scripture, just like an insane amount of scripture. Uh, but the one that always jumps to my mind the fastest is Ephesians 2, 8, and 9. It says, by, For it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. Have you received the gift of God? Have you been saved from your sins by Jesus? I hope that you have. Uh, but whether you have or whether you not have not, I want you to take a minute with me this morning to do something that even Walmart would not dare to do on October 6th and close your eyes and think about Christmas. Uh, now, I want you to think about a particular Christmas. For some of you, you may need to go forward. For some of you, you may need to go backwards. But we're going to think about a Christmas where the presents actually mattered. Because, see, you know, we get older, and a lot of us, it's like we have everything we need, we kind of have everything we want, and the presents are not really that big of a deal. It almost kind of becomes more for us about enjoying uh, the kids and what they're doing. But, but that's not what we're thinking about. We're thinking about a Christmas where the presents matter to you. And I want you to look under the tree and to see that one present. And I don't know whether it's the size or the shape or if it's something about the wrapping paper but you just know this is going to be the most amazing present. Now maybe you can remember a particular present that was especially special to you, or maybe it's, maybe it's a present that you never got, but you just know when you pull that wrapping paper off, you know what's gonna be underneath it. So I want you to take that, wrap, that present, I want you to unwrap it and look at the box and all of the brightly colored pictures on it, how beautiful and amazing it looks. Okay, we're done. That's, you know, that's pretty satisfying, right? No, you got to open the box. I spend half my time on Christmas morning cutting tape and zip ties and plastic packaging so that my kids can actually enjoy the thing that is in the box. Friends, I'm sure you know, but let me remind you that salvation is not just a ticket to heaven. In 1 Corinthians 3, it says, By the grace God has given me, I laid a foundation as a wise builder, and someone else is building on it. But each one should build with care, for no one can lay any foundation other than the one already laid, which is Jesus Christ. If anyone builds on this foundation using gold, silver, costly stones, wood, hay, or straw, their work will be shown for what it is, because the day will bring it to light. It will be revealed with fire, and the fire will test the quality of each person's work. If what has been built survives, the builder will receive a reward. If it is burned up, the builder will suffer loss, 
but yet will be saved, even though only as one escaping through the flames. Now, in case you're already worried, because I'm wearing black and we're reading passages about the survival of our work at the end of our lives, don't worry, this is a good news message. <laughs> Christ is our firm foundation. Now, I'm an electrician, so I've been around quite a few foundations. I've been around quite a few buildings being built, and I can tell you that the foundation is super duper important. Um, and the Bible kind of teaches that as well. You probably remember even from Sunday school about the foolish man who built his house on the sand and the wise man who built his house on the rock. Whatever we build, if it's built on the wrong foundation, it doesn't really matter. It's going to collapse anyway. Fortunately, that's not a problem for us. We have the ultimate thing to build our life around, but having received the perfect foundation, what should we put on that foundation? Should we take a house that is old and termite damaged with aging plumbing and electrical systems with no central air? Should we dig under that, pour this magnificent basement, and then plop the old death trap right back down on top of it and continue to live in it? until something springs a leak or an electrical fire happens and it's burned down and all that, the, that is left is the foundation. <laughs> Certainly not. We were saved, but we were saved with a purpose. In Ephesians 2, it says, For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. If we have been saved, let us consider how other people who have been saved also behave in such a situation. If someone is drowning in a lake and a boat comes along and they are able to clasp the edge and they say, thank goodness I've been saved, this seems like a great place to start my new life, hanging on to the edge of this boat. Having been set free from prison, would a prisoner go out and purchase a pup tent and return to the prison and pitch his tent on the lawn just outside the gates of the prison? I think that he would run just as far as he possibly could away from that place. If we have received the gift of God, but our lives remain unchanged, we are playing with the box. We enjoy owning salvation. Perhaps we talk about it from time to time, or we might put it up on a shelf to show off to people who drop by. But we have not fully experienced the riches of the goodness that is available to us in Christ Jesus. Let us open the box. Let us walk into life with Christ and begin to build a new building that is a new self, a reborn self. Now I'm sure many of you have done this consistently and well, uh, and if that is the case, if you are well experienced with opening the box and taking the things out of the box and using them, I would encourage you to teach others to do the same. Perhaps others of you may identify with my experience. See, I knew that there was more to life with Jesus than just praying the sinner's prayer and carrying on with life as though nothing had changed. But in my house, I was often content to remodel rather than to rebuild. What I mean by that is that I decided to include Jesus into my life as it existed rather than building a new life around him. At times, I kind of picked up Jesus like I picked up the guitar. There were times where I was dedicated, and I put in the effort, and together we made this beautiful music. But my life was not built around the guitar, and busyness and other priorities kind of came into my life. And so if you were to listen to me play the guitar as an untrained musician, you might say, oh, that sounds pretty good. But anybody who's really dedicated, anybody who has really taken the time to dedicate their life to learning the guitar will listen to me play for a little bit. And pretty quick, they'll start to have some questions. When was the last time you changed those strings? About 16 years ago. It sounds out of tune. Have you tuned it today? No. Yesterday? No. When was the last time you tuned it? I'm really not Sure. That chord progression is nice. It's maybe a little repetitive, but it's nice. Can you play anything else? Nah, not really. If we experience some small 
measure of the glory and beauty of life lived with Christ, that is a wonderful thing. We have opened the box, removed the contents, and experienced a little of what it is like to live with God. However, the greatest heroes of our faith were not content with a little of God. They believed that to experience new life in Christ was to experience a death to your old life. In 2 Corinthians 5, it says, If it seems that we are crazy, it is to bring glory to God. And if we are in our right minds, it is for your benefit. Either way, Christ's love controls us. Since we believe that Christ died for all, we also believe that we all died to our old life. He died for everyone so that those who receive his new life will no longer live for themselves. Instead, they will live for Christ who died and was raised for them. So we have stopped evaluating others from a human point of view. At one time, we thought of Christ merely from a human point of view. How differently we know him now. This means that anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. The old life is gone. The new life has begun. And all of this is a gift from God who brought us back to himself through Christ. And God has given us this task of reconciling people to him. If we consider our, cell, our old selves to be dead and our new selves in Christ to be alive, we understand that medically speaking, life and death cannot coexist in one body for long. The part of the body that is dead must be amputated or that death will spread to the entire person. Of course, recognizing death within ourselves can be challenging. As a patient with a severe injury that requires amputation may struggle with the decision to let go of an arm or let go of a leg in order to preserve their life. We struggle to leave behind parts of our human nature that we find comforting or otherwise useful. And the Bible can help us to recognize these parts. In Galatians 5, it says, the acts of the flesh are obvious, sexual immorality, impurity and debauchery, idolatry and witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissensions, factions, and envy, drunkenness, orgies, and the like. I warn you, as I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. Now, perhaps like me, the first time that you read a passage like that, what stands out to you are all the things that you're pretty sure you don't do. Now, if there's any of there, you out there who struggle with witchcraft, we love you. We will help you work through that. But I'm going to guess that for most of you, that has never been a problem in your lives. But maybe there are some things in this list that speak to you as you read over and over it, some things that might need some work. As I decided to follow Jesus more fully, seeking to be in tune with him and to regularly spend time practicing life with him, I was convicted that my heart was full of hatred and discord and that the primary source of this in my life was my obsession with politics. With God's help, I went from listening to talk radio every day to basically never listening to it. Now, please understand, this is my personal conviction. This is what God said needed to be changed in my life. And this may not be something that needs to be changed in your life. And the thing that needs to be changed in your life might not be something that needs to be changed in my life. We have to walk with God. and we, we are so thankful that we serve this loving and merciful God. And he walks into this death trap of our lives that has termite riddled wood and leaks and electrical problems and he doesn't look around and say look at all of the terrible things in your life what God says it does is he walks into one room and he says imagine what this room could be if we just would fix this and this he works with us on a timetable he understands that we can't bear to look at it all at once and deal with it all at once he works with us over time and so the thing that God puts his finger on in your life, that is the thing that you should be working on 
not whatever I'm working on. I'm trying to work on what God has for me. So I still have opinions. I still vote. I still care for my country. But with God's help, a part of my life was devoted that was devoted to things that led to death was cut off. As God removed from me things that I had long struggled with or even embraced, it made room for new things. Now, I don't know how many of you know me well enough to know that I'm not a high energy person. Some people like to kind of work hard, play hard. I like to work hard, rest easy. So I could have never imagined as that kind of person that I could be happy doing 50 hours of work of week split between my day job and my church responsibilities. Uh, and in fact, with God's, without God's help, I know that's something that I'm completely incapable of. Thankfully, Jesus said in John 15, he said, I am the true vine and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes so that it will be even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. Now at some point in college, when Becca and I were dating, she gave me the greatest gift that any woman can give to a man. That's right, she gave me a pocket knife. <laughs> now as a scatterbrained person who tends to lose a lot of things, I have hung on to this knife for at least 16 years. And the one time that I lost it, it fell out of my pocket in the couch. And you remember the story in the Bible about the woman who looked for the lost coin, about the shepherd who looked for the lost sheep? That's how I looked for this knife. And even as I looked for it, I bought another one because I knew I couldn't live without it. Whatever it costs, I would have replaced it. Barring air travel, I carry this knife with me everywhere I go. Whenever I leave someplace, I check my pockets to make sure that it's still there. And let me explain why. Because many a time, I have crawled back into the recesses of some damp crawl space or tight attic only to discover that I had left a screwdriver or a utility knife behind, and this knife was there to save me, to assist me in my work. It's got tweezers and a toothpick. You know, with it, I have pulled thorns from the feet of my children and splinters from my hands. I have cut apples and tomatoes. I've troubleshot electrical issues for church or friends when I was not at work and did not have the proper tools close at hand. I've carved wood, I've shaved tinder, I've sliced rope, I've harvested squash. Uh, just this morning, I opened some uh, softener salt uh, packages, uh, and I've opened countless packages on Christmas morning for my kids with it. May God's gift to you be like this knife. May you carry him wherever you go checking regularly to make sure that you are still with him. May you run to him for help whenever you are in a tight spot. May he enable you to remove everything in your life that does not belong. May you do good works with him, providing for others and fixing what is broken in this world and that list grows longer every day. If you will only ask and listen and obey, God will make of you a new house on an amazing foundation, not just a pretty good remodel. Let's pray. Father God, we pray for those who have not yet received the gift of your salvation that not one of them would be lost. God, we confess that at times we don't remember you like we should. We make you a part of our lives instead of the heart of our lives. Make us new. Show us if there is any dead part of our old self which needs to be cut out. 
and give us the strength to grit through the pain and reach healing on the other side. When we reach the end of our lives, Lord, let our work withstand testing. Help us to build beautiful things and to fully experience the life that you have planned for us on the one foundation you've laid, which is Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Ransom. What a great analogies. I was with you on that deal where you lost your knife. Everybody's done that, haven't you? And even then, and interesting, even though you found a replacement that was maybe the same as well, exactly what you had, but when, it was just joyous when you find that in the cushion there. It's like you had an old friend. Even though you had a replacement, it's just not the same. And so, but you kept the other one just in case. You know, that's the way I would do it. But thank you very much for your for your words, just tremendous. So appreciate you helping us out today, and feel free to come back anytime. So 366 is, uh, is what we're going to sing. It's in our hymnal, I Surrender All, and you can just remain seated. We'll sing that one together. So. have some prayer concerns in our bulletin so let's let's go to the Lord in prayer with those Heavenly Father uh, we thank you again for this day that you've given us in this opportunity to come together to worship you um, Lord we know that your word says that 
uh, we should come to you with all of our anxieties and that in everything we should pray with thanksgiving and present our requests to you. And so we, we do pray for these people uh, in our bulletin. Um, we, we thank you for the Alpha Course that you have established here. We pray that you will be glorified in it and that the members there would continue to learn and, and that um, you would use that to prepare us. And we pray for Carly Clark, who's uh, under treatment. We thank you that the cancer is treatable. We pray for William Jones, who's recovering from his heart procedure. For Mary Driscoll, who's also continuing to recover at home. For Edward King, who's on hospice and has taken a turn for the worse. Lord, we pray for him. For Dean Brunsell, under treatment for cancer. And we pray for Eldon Kaiser and the trouble that he's having with his gallbladder. Pray for Dwight Keene's son, Levi, who is home after his accident. We pray for his, for his quick recovery. And for Dwight Keene also, who fell and hurt his back. We pray for Chris Sandow. And Lord, you would open the door for her in her treatment, um, for, of her pain and her cognitive issues. Pray for Leray and his abdominal issues and the treatments that he's receiving. And for Vern Henry, who's dealing with pain from cancer. Pray for Kathy Becker's sister, Mercedes, who has stage four cancer. And we also pray for Lisa Unruh, that a replacement may be found for her in her um, Omega House Bueller position. Lord, we, we lift all these people before you. We ask that you would be glorified in these circumstances, that you would bring peace. We know that you have a plan in all of this. And we thank you that, that our, our suffering may continue for, for a time, but that joy comes in the morning. But we do pray for healing, Lord, for these people. Above all else, may you be glorified and may your kingdom come. These things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, at this time, uh, we will have our uh, offering. I have a verse for us this morning from 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 9, verse 6 says, remember this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Each man should give what he has decided in his heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. Ushers, will you come forward?
Should we stand? Yeah. Live thee but thy own, whatever the gift may be. All that we have is thine alone, a trust, O oh Lord, from thee. We have one more song we're going to sing together, and while you're standing, we might as well do that. It's 511 in your hymnal, Now I Belong to Jesus. So. Thank you for coming today, and uh, appreciate uh, appreciate you being here. And thank you for bringing us our message today. It's appreciated. Receive this benediction. May God, from His glorious, unlimited resources, empower you with inner strength through His Spirit. Then Christ will make His home in your hearts as you trust in Him. Your roots will grow down into God's love and keep you strong. And may you have the power to understand, as all God's people should, how wide, how long, how high, and how deep his love is. May you experience the love of Christ, though it is too great to understand fully. Then you will be made complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from God. Go in peace.